Hello there, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. In this week's quick tip, I will be showing you how to use the Cinema 4D Volume Builder to bring in volumes into Octane. This can be helpful to create all sorts of volume objects like clouds, or you can bring in your own models inside of Octane as a volume. I don't know why this might be useful, but hey, it's an option. I already created a small scene. To get this slightly gray background color, I used the texture environment and set it to visible environment to only affect the background and not the lighting. And of course, set the RGB spectrum to be this color. Then I use a daylight to light my scene. Also, I set the kernel to path tracing and upped the scatter depth to 16 since we are using volumes and the scatter depth is connected to that. I'll be showing you the steps to go through on a very simple scene. You'll be, of course, free to expand on that later. So I'll be dropping in a cube and a capsule. I will move the capsule slightly to the side. And then I'll be dropping in a volume builder and select both of those objects and drop them in here. As I do so, Octane no longer renders them. This is because Octane doesn't know what to do with the data it's given. To let it know what to do, we need to drop a object tag on the volume builder. Now it's trying to render a sign distance field. It's not looking particularly good and I think it's still in beta. So hopefully this will be a feature to be around later this year to show. But right now we want to go from a sign distance field to creating voxels. There's an update issue, so I will click re-render here. Now this looks a bit better, but it's white. So what we need to do is give it a volume shader and we can do so by hitting the add volume medium here. Okay, very nice. This blockiness reminds me a bit of Minecraft, but we want to have a bit of a higher resolution here. So let's go to a volume builder and set the voxel size to maybe two. But oh no, what is this? Yeah, so, there's a couple of settings we need to do to get it working. Right now, we see that only the boundaries of our objects are rendered as volume. This is because of a couple of things. So if we look at the volume builder, you can see that the volume builder itself is still set up to generate a sign distance field. If we generate a fog, it's partly working, but it still produces very strange result here. I don't know where they're coming from, but we can work around those. To counter that, we need to go to our objects that we have inside of our volume builder, click them and choose maximum voxel fall off. And we need to do that for every object that's in there. And hey, hey, so we managed to get a volume from our objects. Now, of course you can do stuff like smooth the volume and do all sorts of different things that are part of the volume builder pipeline. Let's smooth stuff here. You can see now we have a smoothed edge here. We can also go ahead and subtract the capsule from the cube. And now we just see the cube and the subtraction from the capsule. Let me revert that real quick. So also the smooth. I want to show you one last thing and this thing opens up a lot more possibilities what you can do with that. As you might know, the volume builder is not only working for objects, but also for other things, such as fields. So I want to create a random field here and pull it inside of the volume builder. Nothing has changed right now, but there are some options I can set. So in the volume builder, select the random field and choose the objects below. So the bounding box is not coming from the field, but from the objects. Now you can see that's already something happening here. This is because in the field here, there's a Perlin noise and you can even look at it, what it's doing by choosing the view settings and view plane preview. Now the noise is very small right now, so let's change that. If we're going to the field itself, we can make the noise itself bigger and maybe set it to wavy turbulence. Then what you can do in the remapping tab, go to the minimum and you can even choose negative values 
and you can see that now the noise is eating inside of my volume and creates this interesting effect. You of course also can go in the volume builder again and choose a different mode for what has been done. So if you go to, for example, multiply, the whole result gets a little bit softer. And this already concludes my quick tip. I hope you can see the possibilities here and create something really fun with it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Happy building and see you next time. Bye.